Tadayoshi Yamamoro. To some, he's a villain, to others, a fallen hero. Regardless of how you feel about him, his style became so influential that it is commonly the default look many fans come to associate with Dragon Ball's art style. And I hope this video serves to clear up some confusion many fans have. I've seen some believe his change in style and the quality drop occurred as a result of his age, or perhaps because he switched to digital art and hasn't got used to the medium. But the truth is the quality drop became quite evident all the way back in the 2000s, nullifying any of the previous points. Furthermore, many of these stylistic traits that are usually a point of criticism were beginning to be developed back in Dragon Ball GT and even the latter parts of Dragon Ball Z to some extent. However, whether you're a fan of these changes or not, I hope you'll join me today as we go through Yamamoru's artwork over the past decades and documenting a lot of the various changes throughout his designs. But like in every video, the featured artist for this one is Mula Draws. I've been following his work for several years now and I definitely recommend. It's really cool seeing Dragon Ball in a painterly style, so go show him some support. Link to his page will be in the description. So when Tadayoshi Yamamoru entered into this franchise, he was working for Shindo Productions. Throughout this period on the original series, he would work as both a key animator and in-betweener with the latter role by nature, not lending itself to any expression of one style, but rather following the key animators. But even so, as a key animator, Mitsuo Shindo, his supervisor, would correct his work quite heavily, making it rather difficult to get a taste of his style. However, through Genga, you can get somewhat of a look, but if anything, it's restricted to more so a glimpse due to the scarcity of what's available online. However, with what there is though, he seemed to be quite on model, so there's nothing distinctive to point out in this period. But what I will say is something that has remained unchanged is quite a solid look to line work. Although around the Namek arc, he seemed to escape corrections more and even worked as an uncredited assistant supervisor. Episode 101 marks the first occurrence of him filling a supervisory role and gives a sign of many good things to come. Faces weren't as angular with heads being not as wide, there was less hatching around various muscle groups as well as less lines for battle damage with wider spacing. Pupils were quite small, not too different from Shindo in that case. Eyebrows and eyes are usually more arched and eyebrows are much larger in general. Ears are slightly smaller and a little less detailed than Shindo's and a lot of other Shindo animators. Noses front on are somewhat more defined with extra lines defining the ball of the nose and line work could feature quite bold lines providing some nice depth. All in all, Yamamoru's work carries more of a cleaner look you could say rather than a gritty one. It's quite interesting to see such an approach in this time period as the only other animator I can think of who had quite a simple and refined look to his drawings was Katsuyoshi Nikatsuru. But Yamamoru would work as an assistant supervisor again on 106 with his corrections being even more dominant this time. You can also start to notice on other characters like Tien having much larger pupils and that familiar style of cheek shading becoming more frequent. Then with the end of the Namek arc into the Garlic Jr arc Shindo Productions would work on two episodes, 111 and 116, with these being the last entries Mitsuo Shindo would supervise. Yamamoru, once again uncredited, would work alongside him as an assistant supervisor, as well as providing key animation. It's here we get a small but new trait emerge, which was shading the shadow under the cheekbone with a triangle shape. It did a nice job providing some extra definition to faces, however with episode 122, Tadayoshi Yamamoru would now be the animation supervisor going forward with all the aforementioned points in full effect. And there are several more stylistic differences, for one eyebrows when Goku is a Super Saiyan aren't as large, the cheek shading in most cases can be seen to protrude out further than seen prior. You can also see his tendency to draw small noses much more here as well as the ears likewise becoming predominantly smaller in shape and a little more rounder. There are certainly exceptions though where it may look hardly any different but within his next episode 127 and moving forward they are quite consistently small regardless of character. However around episode 137 they start drifting towards a somewhat triangular shape at times feeling less rounded now and actually becoming slightly larger in size. They also don't seem to stick out as much now 
Furthermore, he seems to draw the little line used to subtly define the anti helix downwards far more often, whereas before it was typically drawn upwards. And the way he stylizes this feature continues even more so in future episodes. By the time of 147, hatching, which could quite often be used for shading under the necks, seems to sort of be a little less frequent and becomes less and less in future episodes. It certainly isn't gone during this arc, but when used now, it's not as intense as it typically was prior. Then around episode 157, we get some small changes with anatomy, before Yamamoro would often define the collarbone and draw a line in the center of the pecs. This is very consistent across all fighters up to this point, but it's here where he begins to sort of merge it together without any break in the line, giving this very defined look to the pecs, and sometimes not defining the collarbone at all. Although you technically see this approach in the prior episode he supervised, 152. However, I believe it was more so the style of the other key animators shining through, as you had Naoki Miyahara, Masaki Sato, and Katsuyoshi Nakatsu, who drew in this style, and in Yamamura's own scene later on, you can see the way he draws it is quite different. Regardless, so going forward, this would be the standard look. And also around 157, you can begin seeing the pupils when characters are transformed into Super Saiyans being a little wider, and even more so in his next episode, 162. Furthermore, highlights on the eyes seem to make their first appearance in 162, but this seems to be limited to just Super Saiyan eyes rather than the other fighters. There are also more lines used in the hair and the shapes being a little less rounded as well as the spikes being not as large, but this was more so just following the look Toriyama was moving to. All in all, over the course of this arc, Yamamoru's style went through many changes and developed some new traits that would remain within his work for years to come. His style though would become further refined in the next one, the Boo arc. At this point, Yamamoro had also picked up the baton from Minoru Maeda, now being the new character designer for future movies, and doing a lot of the promo work, and some of his character sheets from the movies would be reused within the main series. But let's get to the Boo arc, in particular episode 200, and one of the first major changes is how he draws the anatomy of the upper arms. He seems to really define the lateral head of the tricep as well as draw the bicep in somewhat more of a rectangular shape. There was typically more of a break between the lines prior, whereas now it's almost one solid shape for the bicep and deltoid. Although you can see him draw the tricep in a similar way, even in his work from the Namek arc, and he shifts to this more blocky look, so to say, in the character sheets for movie 8 and in later episodes of the Cell arc, like 185, but it's far more consistent here and is applied across a lot more characters. Once again though, I believe this is in part influenced by Yamamoro just going off the character sheets for this arc which in turn is following the style within the manga, which he no doubt would have been directly drawing from as well. Another feature you can spot fairly early on in this arc is the larger chins, which also remain pretty consistent throughout the rest of the Boo arc and somewhat increases in size within his future work. Hatching under the chin, on the other hand, seems to be almost non-existent at this point, as well as indicating the collarbone. There's also a trend of drawing the third tone much more prominent on the face, Usually it was more subtle in the past arcs with some rare exceptions, but gradually throughout this arc it became quite increasingly used, providing a more detailed look to faces. But moving forward to around 229 which was supervised by Shingo Ishikawa, but had Yamamoru working as a chief animation supervisor, providing additional corrections on top of Ishikawa, you can really start to notice the roundness to faces starting to emerge. There is less curvature for the side of the head and the lines defining the jawline are more rounded off than straight. This makes the faces also a little wider and this look much like the larger chins, continues on into his future work also. There also seems to be a tendency for highlights being drawn in Goku's hair. Now looking back to the Cell arc, there are certainly instances where he would add them, so this isn't exclusive to the Boo arc, and this is a feature not really exclusive to Yamamoru in general, but regardless it's far more common to see now in his episodes. And speaking of highlights, within his promo work in regards to the skin, they start to be quite commonplace now, and for the hair there are often two shades. Again though, many other promo artists added them as well at this time. In Yamamoru's episodes though, highlights are still on the rarer side, but it's interesting when they do appear, in particular at the end of episode 252, in how they're drawn in pretty much the same shape as they are in his more recent work. Around this time as well, noses front on appear to be a little wider and less narrow in design, quite a common trait going forward. By the time of his final episode in Z though, there aren't too many stylistic differences left to mention, 
One, however, that does seem to emerge though is how he draws Vegeta in some shots. The eyes have a lot less curvature as well as the eyebrows likewise being the same with less of an arch than usual. Now this certainly isn't a constant trait throughout this episode at all, but these few frames are quite reminiscent of how he draws characters in a lot of his later work. Additionally, this trend of less curvature to the eyes is a feature that you begin to see develop later down the line, but that's for another day. So thank you all for watching and especially if you made it to the end. I did not expect when I first started on this one that it would be two parts. Originally the topic and main title was actually going to be the de-evolution of Yamamoto's art style and I was planning to go over his older stuff from Z first to sort of better illustrate the drop in quality down the line. But by the time I got to the cell arc portion I realized that I was going to have to split it into two parts and finish it off another time. I wasn't really intending to make a new addition to the Evolution series, so I would say this is more so a happy accident as my man Bob Ross would say, but if anyone needed a dedicated video on this topic, it's certainly Yamamoru. Come to think of it, the only evolution of anyone's art style I've made prior is on Toriyama, which was my very first video. Random channel fact for the two people that care. But with that though, thank you for your continued support, and I'll see you later.